So again, if I could have screens on, that'd be awesome. Um, we are to our third week of our narrative writing unit. The first week we talked about how to come up with a great story and how to plan one. The second week we talked about how to write a great story so that your reader feels like they're right there in the action with you experiencing it. And this week is all about how to finish a story so that it is easy to read, it makes sense, um, your reader can understand it and publish it so that it looks good. So that's what we're working on today. Publishing, editing, and rereading with a lens. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show you these two lessons that we're going to go through today. And I think they're pretty short, but if they're not, I apologize. It looks like Canvas is working a little bit better now. Hopefully you guys didn't run into too much trouble with it this morning. Here we are in language arts. Remember you go past the flex take action week. You go through the getting started unit, which I just think I'll get rid of right now. You go through story structure to the very end and you'll find the narrative writing unit. You open that up and then you'll see all the lessons we've already done. Story mountains, SAID writing, slowing down the heart of the story, hooks. Then we're to finishing your story. Last Friday, we talked about that. And now we're to reading with lenses and revising, editing, and publishing. Before I show you this lesson on reading, rereading with lenses, I actually want to show you some of the online punctuation, grammar, spelling stuff, which you should know already, but I just want to make sure you know it. So I just want to go to one of my Google Docs. Um, I'm going to go to my waffle and open up my drive and find my story about the hostess fruit pie. Now this one's already been kind of spell checked and everything, but I'll put in some put in some crazy words. Let's see here. Let me put a couple of extra letters here. Cool <laughs> summer. Okay. Now I've misspelled them some things just so you can see this. So here we are in my story. You'll notice my story has paragraphs. We're going to talk about that next time, but you might already know how to do that. If you look in a book, you're going to see it does this, does it at a few times, and we'll talk about that next time. But for right now, what I want you to think about is that we're going to practice rereading and revising. But before we do that, there's just some real simple things you can do. Up here under tools, you can see spelling and grammar check. I'm going to click it. And it suggests to me, it highlights this word and, it, and this word is spelled wrong. And it says change summer to summer. And I can just click on that and it accepts it. Or I can click accept. This says socked me. He usually socked me. Now this is why you have to be careful and not just accept. Because if you look at what they wanna change it to, um, so I, this is where my brother punched me, right? They don't recognize that word because it's kind of a slang word. But which one do I really want? Socked or sock ped? <laughs> sock ped doesn't make any sense, does it? So spell check is a robot and it doesn't understand everything. So you have to read it carefully and say, I don't want to change socked to sock ped. I'm going to ignore it. Okay, let's see what else. Something wet oozed out of my hand. I turned my head to look at it opening my eyes in surprise. It wants to put a comma in there. And you know, I think it's right. I need to pause right there. So I'm gonna accept that one. You can either click on it or click accept, it's the same. Again here, did I dare, I thought, dangerously holding my breath. Dangerously holding my breath, I like that. And here's another one. Slowly my brother looked up at me, comma, his, yep, they're right. I whispered, slowly emphasizing, and enjoy savoring each word. I whispered slowly emphasizing and enjoying is what I meant to say. Oh, look, it gives me that suggestion. So you have to reread every one and make sure it's doing what you want it to do. I think there was another mistake I made in here, but I don't know where it is. It didn't seem to catch it. And sometimes it doesn't. The other thing is if I have my cursor here and I start the spell check, it's only gonna check from there. So now it's starting the grammar check, but from down here and it won't do it from the top. Okay, so that's a nice tool that you have for checking your spelling and grammar and it's going to give you a lot of suggestions, which is great. Remember that today you need to have your story typed, you need to check your spelling and grammar, 
you're going to check for end marks like periods and exclamation marks and quotation marks. You're going to check for paragraphs and really make sure that it's easy to read your story. Then, my friends, I want you to go. Um, let's see here. Stop my share. No, I don't want to do that. I'm, I want you to go and think about reading with lenses. When I say lenses, I mean glasses, but I don't really mean glasses. I mean thinking about only one thing. So let's watch this together and see if, if you guys can see it. Can you see it? I'm starting our recording now. Um, so this is going to be our lesson, and then after our lesson, we are going to do um, some uh, breakout rooms, and we've got a game to play today, a new one. So do you guys like all my crazy games? <laughs> all right. We are to the third week of writing our story. The first week you planned your story, your own personal story. The second week, last week, you wrote your story. And this week we're revising and editing our story. Now, sometimes kids think that that means that you just correct the spelling and write it really pretty or type it. But what I wanna show you is that word revise. So hopefully you can see my poster up here and I'm gonna pin my video so it's bigger. There we go. So this word revise is made up of the prefix re, which means to do again, like, return, rewrite, means to do it over again, right? Mm -hmm. And then the, the root word vise, which sounds like vision, which has to do with seeing. So the word revise means to see again. And it doesn't mean just fixing your story. It means looking at it with whole new eyes. So you know how if you're gonna go swimming, you probably put on swimming goggles? And if you're going to go out in the sunshine, you're going to put on sunglasses. Well, today, what I want you to do is look at your story through a lot of different lenses. These are lenses, glasses. I use them to see better. And I have some very special lenses here to help me see my story better. This is help me see it again through new eyes. So the truth is, once you've written your story, the very first step that I want you to do, and I'm going to have you do this today, we're going to do this in. Um, uh, well, we're actually going to all mute our screens and do it with everyone on the screen. I'm just going to pause our recording and we're going to do it. And that's called the very first time you're going to want to put your everything okay glasses on. These are my all okay glasses. I'm going to put those on and I'm going to read my story. And the first time I reread my story, what I'm really checking is, is it okay? Does it make sense? So let me show you what I mean by that. And I need to have my story and I need to have a pen or pencil. So you guys wait just a second. I'll have you go grab those things in a minute. But I've got my story and I've got a pen or pencil and I've got my seeing it again glasses and I'm gonna read it again, except the truth is I can't read with these glasses. So I'm gonna put these back on. <laughs> Pretend that I have those on. I'll put those on top of my head. There we go. Okay. So here's my story about the hostess fruit pie. I'm reading it again. This time, the only thing I'm looking for, I am not correcting capital letters. I'm not looking for spelling. I'm not looking at commas. Because if I try to fix everything all at once, I'm gonna miss things. And I wanna make sure I get everything. And this is the most important. I'm asking myself, does it make sense? Can I see it and hear it and know what's going on like a movie? Okay, so I want you guys to listen carefully. And I'm gonna start reading. And what I would like you to do when I stop is give me a thumbs up if you feel like you can see what's going on and hear it like a movie, or a thumbs down if you think it's missing something and I need to add it. Okay, here we go. And I changed my story a little bit. I went back and when after Ms. Um, Watson taught her lesson on hooks, I decided to start with some action and then go back in time and, and do my story. So here we go. Hey, I was watching that, I shouted. My voice sounded too shrill. Without bothering to turn his head and look at me, shut up, you fat cow, hissed my older brother venomously. I heard the threat in his tone. I glared at him as he thrust his fat, stubby fingers in his mouth to gnaw on his nails. I hate you, I hate you, pulse like a mantra through my head. Okay, thumbs up, you can see where I am and what's going on. Thumbs down, you can hear what's going on, but you can't really see it. 
Okay, I see Clara is saying she can't quite see where I am. Vi is saying he doesn't see where I am. Yeah, I really, you guys are so smart. I really forgot um, to describe where I was, didn't I? I didn't put the setting in. So let me think. Um, yeah, it was summertime. It was the afternoon. I was on the couch. Oh yeah, I had that detail about the sweaty legs sticking to the couch. So let me add that. Hmm. I'm laying back kind of on the couch. I'm trying to imagine it again. I have my elbow on the couch. Oh yeah, and I had that fruit pie in my hand. Let me add that. All right, let me try this again from this paragraph. So I just added a paragraph. Still wearing my everything okay glasses. Once again, he had shattered my lazy afternoon. 10 minutes before I clicked on the TV and flopped on the couch. My sweaty legs stuck to the cool leather. Slowly, I propped myself up on my elbow and began to peel back the crinkly paper from my hostess blackberry fruit pie. I smiled, pleased with myself for finding the pie and the uninhabited family room and couch. I bit into the sweet, juicy crust. The filling oozed out, bulging at the top. Mmm, I let out a sigh and leaned back into the cushions, resting my head on the armrest and focusing on Jan Brady complaining about her sister. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Now give me the thumbs up again, this time if you can see what's going on better. Yeah, I see all thumbs up this time, I did better. Now let's see, that's kind of the beginning of my story. Everything's pretty calm. I need to make sure I add some rising tension. So now I could keep going on with what's happening, but I really just need to get to the action of the rising tension. So let me think for a minute. Kind of boring right now, I'm just watching TV and everything. I guess I have to get to the part where I'm going back to the part where he changed the channel. And I guess the action really that's getting more tense is that I'm getting madder at him. I'm building up this argument in my head. So let me read that part. I turned my head back to the TV screen, which moments before featured the blonde heads of Marsha and Jan Brady and looked at the race cars whipping pointlessly around the track. Vroom, vroom, screech grated in my ears. I didn't really see the cars consume with the debate building in my head. It's not fair, I thought. Let's see, I need to add some description of what I'm doing. I'm, oh, look, I'm clenching my fist. I'm gonna add that. Squeezing my face up tight and clenching my fist. For a split second, I felt the urge to jump up and change the channel back. Oh, why didn't I change that channel back? I need to think, that doesn't make sense to you guys probably, huh? Why didn't I just change the channel, you know what? Because my brother always punched me right here on my arm where it hurts. Do any of your brothers punch you? He would punch me right here and it hurt. So like right now I'm thinking about it and I'm like putting my hand there. I better add that to my story. For a second, I controlled the urge to jump up and change the channel back. Involuntarily, I reached up and rubbed the spot on my shoulder where he usually socked me. I squeezed my eyes shut to block out the noises in my head. Now this, reading it to yourself out loud, if I were at school, I would make all the students go outside and the, where I taught, we had a big forest and I have them read it to a tree. So they read it out loud with a pencil in their hand so they can add to it and change it. What we're gonna do right now is I want everyone to go get your story. If it's online, open it up, get a pen or pencil, or if you're online, have your typing fingers ready. And I'm going to pause the video and I want every single person here to read their entire story out loud. I'm gonna look at your lips and make sure they're moving. I want all screens on, I'm stopping the recording. And you guys are gonna read the whole story through with your is everything okay glasses and make sure it makes sense. Adding any details you have to add, not looking at spelling, not fixing other things. Alma, go ahead. Oh, you're muted, honey. My um, I wrote my I wrote my story on the Google Docs, but I have to like my screen goes off when I'm like when I go to that page. So. It's okay because we can still see you, so I'll be able to see you. Oh, I thought okay. Yeah, you won't see me, but I'll see you. So don't turn your video off. Leave your video on. Mute yourself so that we won't hear you reading. And I want to see your mouth moving. Okay, as you read through it out loud. Everyone is reading your story out loud. I should see all mouths moving. I'm going to pause. Okay, and I'm going to pause too. 
I would love it if you could grab your stories right now, grab a pen or pencil, turn on your screen, mute yourself and read through your story with a pen or pencil handy so you can add details. Okay, if you're if you're reading it online, I should still see your lips moving. I'm going to pause our recording and watch you guys read. Okay, readers and writers, I know you might not be done, but we're going to go on with the lesson a little bit. So you start out and you reread your story out loud, asking yourself, does it make sense? Are they complete sentences? Did I describe everything so somebody can see it like a movie? Have I added enough details so they can understand what I was thinking or feeling? Did I remember to add, I felt scared and have that rising tension? I know there's so, so many things to think about. It can be difficult, but I'm going to go back to sharing my screen and we're going to finish that lesson. Maybe if I can find it, where is it? There it is. Okay, here we go. Hopefully. You continue with this work. So remember I said you had many different lenses to look through. And that was the reading it the first time to make sure it makes sense. You should read it out loud yourself. You should also read it out loud to someone else if you can and have them listen and ask you like, I can't really see what's going on or this part doesn't make sense, right? And you should be willing to change your story, add to it, take away from it, whatever you need to do to change it. Now we're gonna change our glasses again. And this time, let me pin my video again. Uh, here we go. Okay. This time you're gonna put on your next set of glasses, which are your sentences with end mark glasses. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys all think that you write in sentences with end marks, but the truth is you don't always. So let's make it easy for Ms. Laws to read it by making sure that our entire story is written in complete sentences with end marks. Remember a sentence needs two parts, a subject and a predicate, a who and a what. Sometimes I have had students write stories where the entire first page was one sentence. So please break your ideas into sentences, okay? A lot of times this can be done, like if you have got up, then I brushed my teeth, then I went to the store, then I ate cereal. All you have to do is say, like I got up and I brushed my teeth, period. Get rid of the then and you say, I ate breakfast and I ate cereal, period. Get rid of the then. So words like then and but, all those transition words that link sentences together, if a sentence is too long, it's called a run-on sentence and you need to break it up. The truth is when we're reading, we want some sentences that are short and some sentences that are long. We want variety. So this time I'm gonna read my story and make sure that I have broken it into sentences and have capital letters and end marks at the end of each sentence. I'm not gonna be paying attention to whether it makes sense. I'm not gonna be looking at spelling. I'm not gonna be paying attention to paragraphs. All I'm looking at is sentences. So again, everyone mute, everyone look back at your story and start reading it for sentences. Two minutes of sentence work, begin. Okay, friends, two minutes, reread your story. Make sure you've got uh, the story broken up into lots of sentences with end marks, periods, and commas, and exclamation points. Read it right now and make sure you have lots of sentences. Reread, reread for sentences.
Okay, and I know that wasn't really a long time to reread it again for sentences, but I'm going to let you do more of that work on your own. We're going to go on with the lesson and see what the next lens is. Besides, I know you love my glasses. Wait, I got, do you still have those? I gave them to my oh, students. I wish I had them. <laughs> and each time you're reading the whole story all the way again, um, but uh, we don't have time for that right now, so I'm cutting you short. But hopefully when you're done with me, you're going to go back and read it all again. So this time I'm putting on my special glasses for spelling. These are my spelling glasses. Pretty nice, huh? And I'm also going to be checking for this mistake that we all make a lot of there, there, and there. So if it's they are, it's they with a Y apostrophe R-E. If it's there over there, it's T-H-E-R-E. If it belongs to them, if it's their house, their dog, it's possessive, T-H-E-I-R, okay? And I'm gonna check for spelling. Now, if you typed this on the computer, which I hope you all did, um, if you haven't done that yet, you need to get it typed this week. You can use the spell check on your computer. If you have never used spell check, here's how you do it. You go to your Google Doc, you go to the top and you click tools, and then you go down and you click spelling and it will pop up and do spell check. Now, many of our computers are programmed to already automatically underline anything that's wrong in spelling. And usually if you hover over the word now, it'll give you suggestions for how to fix it. But be careful because sometimes it's wrong and you have to be thinking. So this time we're putting on our lenses. We've got two minutes. We're checking quickly for spelling and circling any words you think you're going to need to, to check. Everybody go. Checking for spelling this time. And I'm going to just two leave minutes. it plain. Um, I start reading further down if you were halfway through your document. The last thing I'm going to talk about is paragraphs and commas, but we're going to do that lesson on Wednesday. So I'm going to stop the lesson for now. And I just want you to remember that anytime you are revising your work, it's not just fixing one thing. You're going back, you're checking and checking, you're reading it over and over again. Yeah, Eli. A lot of people just left. 